Hello, welcome to my channel. My channel is all about soap making and handmade products. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave me comments. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Thank you for supporting my channel. You can also follow me on Instagram at thescraftworks for more sneak peeks and ongoing projects. It has already been a year since I started this channel and I'm so grateful for all your support. Since my first video was making hot processed liquid soap, this year round I would like to show you guys how to make liquid soap using the cold process method. You can always go back to watch how liquid soap is made using the hot process method. The cold process method is pretty much the same but you don't have to add extra heat to the process to push through the saponification. This way it is thought to prevent denaturing the oils, keeping the nutrients of the oils. So to make liquid soap, you would need potassium hydroxide. My go-to soap calculator is soapy.com and it is so easy to use. So right here, you have to choose to make liquid soap. And now check out the purity of your potassium hydroxide on the label of your bottle. My one says 87%. In general, it's best to have 90%, but this is the one I've got. For the lye solution concentration, I normally use 3 to 1 water to lye ratio. Now we're going to choose our formula. This time around, I like to make a single oil liquid soap using 100% coconut oil. This soap with a high content of coconut oil and a low super fat will produce a high cleansing power and it will be used for cleaning. This is my go-to soap for cleaning my soaping equipment after making cold processed bar soaps and this will do wonders making them spotless. So I just pick coconut oil and make it 100% for the formula. For the super fat, since it's for cleaning, probably 0 to 1% will do or else you'll have an oil film on the surface whatever you clean. Depending on how much soap paste you want, you will adjust your oils up here and this time I'll use 500 grams of coconut oil. He will tell you how much soap paste you would yield. So after you plug in everything, you measure out your water and potassium hydroxide, then you're adding the potassium hydroxide into the water slowly to prevent overheating until all the potassium hydroxide has been incorporated into the water. Once the lye solution cools to room temperature, add the solution into the oil and start mixing. From this point on, mixing is the key. Remember to keep your stick blender at break every now and then or else it will overheat. I usually blend for 2-4 minutes and come back after 15 minutes. You need to know your stick blender well to know if it can handle that much stress. This process is quite boring because all you do is blend and blend until you can't blend anymore. But I love watching how the soap changes. Instead of replicating my household cleaning soap where I've had a recipe of 80% coconut oil and 20% rice bran oil, this time I've decided to make a single oil soap because this will give me the flexibility to combine with other soap paste depending on what I would like to use the soap for. I can make 100% coconut oil soap for cleaning or a 80% olive oil and 20% coconut oil soap for my hands. The soap will always look like that they are separating but just keep blending and eventually it will become thicker. Seven minutes into the process, it's transforming and producing many bubbles. After 15 minutes, the soap is looking like thick applesauce. Giving my stick blender a break, coming back to the soap, the soap is no longer separating and the texture is getting thicker. The saponification process for cold process is much slower compared to hot process. Another 5 minutes passing by, it's turning more like thick custard with bubbles. Half an hour, it is getting thicker, more like a taffy texture. So 
so I kept blending and blending until the texture of the soap turned into solid taffy. As you can see, the soap is too thick for more blending, and I'll stop here and let it sit and do its work. So now I covered it with some flat wrap and foil on top, then placed it in an insulated bag to keep it warm. I came back to the soap after 3 days, then did a zap test, then diluted it some soap paste. You can do the zap test earlier than that, but then I got lazy and left it for longer. For cold processed liquid soap, as long as you pass the zap test, you can dilute it and use it. As you can see, the diluted soap paste is not too clear. But then if you let the soap sit for about 3 weeks, sequestering it, it will become clearer and the leather it would produce would be much better as well. Coming back to the soap after 2 more days, you can see the soap becoming clearer. I left it here for another 2 weeks, then transferred the soap to another container for storage because I like to keep my soap paste as a paste, then dilute it as I go. Cold processed liquid soap is a great way to make liquid soap with little supervision and if you have quite a bit of time to get back to it every now and then during the day. While with hot process, you get to see the whole soap paste changing in texture. I think you should try both processes to see which one you prefer. I know some people love to make soap paste balls to store them, especially with 100% coconut oil soap because it creates a relatively hard paste. Feel free to play with your soap. Here is a comparison of 100% olive oil soap and 100% coconut oil soap. Look at the colour difference and the 100% olive oil soap is much softer. You can play with different percentage of the two soap paste to create the soap texture you like. Here is how the soap looks like after sequestering for 3 weeks. I like diluting the soap paste by just adding it into distilled water and let it sit. You can also check out my previous video on ways to dilute liquid soap paste. Look at how clear the soap dilutes after 3 weeks. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you liked the video and subscribe to the channel for more videos.